Hello and welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, where today we will be interviewing Brother Bill Overy of the Grand Lodge of British Columbia and the Yukon Education Committee. Ladies and gentlemen, brethren all, welcome to the Working Tools Podcast, a casual conversation around Freemasonry. First, it's important to note that our opinions and thoughts are our own and do not reflect those of our Grand Lodge or respective craft or concordant bodies. Please connect with us and ask questions, either here on YouTube or on our Facebook page. We'd also appreciate a thumbs up and especially any comments on our videos. My name is Matthew Apple, and I am a Master Mason here in Washington in the U.S., and we are joined by one of our usual hosts today, Worshipful Brother Stephen Chung up in British Columbia, and we have our special guest today, Brother Bill Overy, who is on the Grand Lodge of British Columbia and the Yukon Education Committee, as well as being the Director of Masonic Education for his lodge, which is uh, Dogwood Number 192 in British Columbia. Brother Bill, welcome to our, our humble podcast. Thank you very much. So uh, usually we start off our, our interviews with uh, the, the obvious question. So how did you become a Mason? What's your, uh, your Masonic history, if you will? Well, um, I was going to give you a bit of a story on where I got to, because we've always lived an unusual life. Um, and it's got to the time now when age gets in the way of uh, your way of life and you want to carry on, but realize you can't. So this is why I started collecting all my papers, projects, and things together. I was raised into Freemasonry in England in 1979. And you may wonder why I never went through the chair. Well, for those who have thought it and have been a bit too polite to um, ask, let me explain. I left home when I was 15 and joined the Air Force, the Royal Air Force, that was in England. In 59, I was married. And in 1961, I was posted to Aden. That is now a part of Yemen. In 1961, I was uh, uh, six months later, my wife Edna joined me. And six weeks after that, I was sent on active service actually in Kuwait. I did get back every so often, but uh, it was not a fun life for Edna. And then she found out she was expecting. So I must have been lucky on one of the one of the visits. And uh, I could suddenly return home early. When the time in the RAF was up, I joined a flying club in Folkestone and I finished up on the board as the technical director of the company. I joined a health club with two friends and I gathered they were Freemasons. So I discussed it with them and told them I would like to join. I was introduced to SeaTech Lodge, number 8185. Now that's a number you don't get very often in North America, uh, which is the Southeastern Technical College Lodge in Folkestone. I went through the three degrees with another Mason who was the chief engineer of the local Ashford um, Railway Works. I discovered it was just what I wanted in my life and I enjoyed the friendship, especially the festive board, and that each lodge tried to have a finer wine list than the other lodges that used the temple. I thought it sad that they were not so open in those days. I would have loved to have had my uncle at my raising but that was the way things were. The typical thing was on the next day after my raising, I was having a morning coffee with the chairman of the company when he said, welcome to the craft. So somebody had obviously been talking. And if you want any time away from Masonic duties and someone makes a comment, just send him to me. I find it strange looking back that we never mentioned Freemasonry again. And I never met him in Lodge, but that's the way it was. When I'd been a Mason for about three years, I was invited to come to Canada by the engineering director of Canadair to help with their new aircraft, the Challenger. And so my family moved to Montreal and almost immediately I started to travel. My wife came with me and we found we enjoyed the traveling life. 
After five years, we decided to leave Canada, but would still keep traveling. And over the years, I joined other companies who needed a technical author or a technical troubleshooter. And this gave us a lifestyle where we were away from home about 80% of our life. But it was a real fun existence. Although I did join other lodges, when I thought I was about to settle down, we never did. So it never worked out. Eventually, though, I did retire and I, we moved to Faberson, um, Abbotsford in British Columbia to be with the grandchildren. In 2006, I affiliated with Abbotsford Lodge number 17. I felt it was too late to go through the chair because my memory was no longer as sharp as it was. So I took any opportunity to help in the lodge and finished up as the lodge historian and then later added the position of Director of Masonic Edu Education, and this was followed by the Lodge Librarian. In 2017, my age stopped my evening lodge meetings, and I applied to Dogwood Lodge in Langley, who is a morning lodge. And uh, a few minutes after I was voted in as a member, I became the Director of Masonic Education. So I started on the run, I suppose, to speak. Um, Recently, I was advised to slow down by my doctor, so I de decided to stop my family history research and my story writing, I was, I was an author, and just stay active as the Director of Masonic Education. I also decided to start and put my affairs in order, so this evening's pres presentation is in fact the result of that. I would like to introduce the three packages that I call My Legacy to the Craft. They represent my Masonic life in British Columbia and consist of my papers, my mentoring programs, and my projects. I have already started to make them available to all Master Masons and Lodges to use as they wish. In fact, over 60 have already been passed on. The main thing that I must state before I describe them, they are under the Freedom of Information Code. That means they are now in the public domain as far as Freemasons are concerned, and you can freely use them as you wish. The only exception is the correspondence course that is under copyright to me, and when I pass on, Dogwood Lodge will take over. And I have tried to put everything in Microsoft Word so that you can change them to match your own lodge, change pictures if there's any photographs in use. But more importantly to all of that, they're all free. I don't charge for anything, including the um, correspondence course, which I run. So have fun and keep smiling. So that gives you an idea where I've got to today. <laughs> yes, sir. That's a, I'm, I'm impressed you had all that organized. Usually there's a little more hemming and hoing and <laughs> people uh, <laughs> trying to recall what's happened. Uh, so the, the project you were talking of, the, it's sort of divided into three pieces there. Um, yeah, three. Yeah. So the the first is the the papers. What are the what are the papers about? What are they? Um, it's the of? papers that I, I've since I became the education officer, and the night that I was done um, made that in Abbotsford Lodge, I started um, reading a paper at every lodge meeting, and decided to carry it on every month. So I'm now over seventy um, papers that cover every aspect of. Freemasonry, and um, they that uh, they go everywhere. I've got about two hundred and sixty people in my sending off list. People have requested to keep my papers, and they go on ev everywhere. Like the one that I've got, there is a paper ready ready on um, for um, the first of December, and the one for the first of January are already prepared ready to be sent out. And that is the first package, in fact, of my legacy. It, they, they call their ovary um, papers. We, we like the Hanoverian papers. We thought of calling it the Ovarian papers, but they thought that wasn't a, wasn't a good title. And um, so that's the first third of the, the thing. And uh, they've all gone out. I uh, think it's pretty cool. Now, the um, the the one of the other components is the um, 
I guess the revamped version of the mentorship program. Um, yeah. And uh, tell us about that. You, how, tell us about the, the, how that became about and, and so on. Yeah. Well, the second package is the generic mentoring program. Now that is an English, um, English. <clears throat> it's the one thing, isn't it? It's an English. It's a Canadian program that I introduced into Dogwood Lodge um, about two years ago. And it tells you exactly what to do, what papers. So all of this lot is available to you actually in the, in the, with the, um, the legacy. Okay, and now, you go through, I know because my lodge has taken that program of yours and adopted it wholeheartedly. Uh, so I know what is in there and what what you're talking about, everything you need, but everything you yeah. need for what? For, because this program, it has everything from the six-step program to um, uh, documents that you can trickle feed to prospects along their journey. And That's you know, right. tell, tell them more about, you know, the, the program, the package, the, the design that you've done there. Because I think okay. that the I think that the package is so incredible. Yeah. It has so much um, uh, for a guy who's in the journey. Yeah. Well, what it is, I just decided it first, obviously, for the Canadian ritual. And um, what I did was I made the. Um, uh, program that was first envisaged by most worshipful brother Don Stutt way back and he was introduced again by um, most worshipful brother Barry Barry Birch which is a much more recent guy when he was the Grand Master and I took his words literally and got down and I built up a program now the difference that I did in the program was um because Grand Lodge had made a very rough guide of which way we should go. I started from the day the person became a, um, um, a Freemason, not a Freemason. The first time he became a member by being voted in. So it's before his initiation. And that gives him a lot of information that um, I've got a book in the, the projects line that tells him all about Freemason. It's an e-book. Um, and it keeps that. The second one is after he gets his entered apprentice till the time he becomes a fellow craft. And then the next one is from the fellow craft, the master mason. And then that's where the um, Grand Lodge finished their project. I added another year because I found that a lot of these guys were unsure of themselves. So what I wanted to do was keep them there under my wing, shall we say, for another 12 months and to make sure that they could have extra papers to read and they would continue their education. And I assume that at the end of that year, they will know enough people in the lodge. They would have moved out of the, the piece at the corner, <laughs> in the northeast corner, and they will be sitting in the lodge and they will make, make new friends at the festive board and that sort of thing. So that's what I aimed at with the rituals. And I did them first with the Canadian, and then I did it for the um, ancient. Because um, I was with the ancient in um, Abbotsford, and I did rewrote all of their program and uh, sent it as a proper copy to Grand Lodge. I do involve Grand Lodge on everything that I can so that I know that it's, I'm not making too many mistakes, but I've never had any queries at all. In fact, um, there, my, all, all the, the legacy is now um, in a DVD in Grand Lodge Library. So the, 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 this was the second big thing that I needed to do. And um, I find that the, uh, the ancient and the Canadian are very similar apart from some things are reversed uh, and that's where I pointed out. So you could get your, you could pick up the package and do an ancient or an, uh, um, the uh, Canadian. 
Unfortunately, nobody would give me a copy of the um, English the emulation. So I couldn't do that. And I couldn't wait any longer. And um, I'm very close friends with the, the, the next grandmaster, Ken Overy. He's a cousin that kind of about 500 years ago, he was a cousin. And I, when I did family history, I got into it. So we've met a few times, but he's never given me his, he's got an inner emulation lodge. And uh, the other brother, um, he's with the Heritage Lodge in uh, Ontario, which another group that took a lot of, took a big package of loads of my papers. And um, he's got, he, he uses, doesn't use the emulation, he used Canadian. So, but there, there is people down in the States because I used to go frequently. Um, Abbotsford Lodge is allied to the United Lodge in... Um, Burlington, Burlington United. But, yeah, that's right, yeah. So I used to go there and I spend the night there with them at their, their lodge and go to their lodge meeting. I found it totally different and it was very interesting, but it's, that's, it's all different from a Freemasonry. Nothing is the same and you can do what you like with it, you know, it's, yep. as long as you stay within the bounds and that I've stayed within the bounds. I wish David so were that, here. He, uh, he often talks about how he's disappointed with our, um, our program here in Washington that the, there's not a constant, like you were just saying, where you start when he's, you know, David would start even before he, when he petitions, before he even is, is voted in, all the way through being a Master Mason. He's often said that the, uh, that when you become a Master Mason, we sort of go, okay, you're a Master Mason, we're done with you. And, you know, you're go sit over way. there, and that's it. And, and I didn't agree with that. And that's what um, I did. Nobody's questioned it, so I assume that the group. The worshipful master is still happy with it. <laughs> there you and go. <laughs> I know that I know that the people that are, have been become master masons are very happy with it, because they are suddenly helping me look after the new guys coming through in that year, and it gives them an interest, and they they learn a lot from it, and all of those have got it. Yeah, and and really the 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 cool part for them is now being able to participate and help others you know um that's right we we found that everybody who does that in our program gets such a a, a, a rewarding feeling from it um that's right yeah you know, um, being being part of somebody else's journey and, and helping them see the light is uh pretty cool right and i think that the <clears throat> the way in which you've laid out your program, your, and now is your whole program referred to as the legacy to the craft? Yeah. Okay. Everything, so, everything, everything I've told you about is a part of the, this legacy. Right. Yeah. And, I think you've got a so, copy, haven't you? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And, <laughs> and I've got the original copy from Grand Lodge years ago, and then I got the, the revised version from you. And I gave that to our uh, the guy in charge of our mentorship program, and um, he he's retired, so he has time to open up files and read things more, and and so on. And he's so happy that he's got that um, because it kind of laid out more instruction than what we got originally. We got a bunch of documents and a bunch of things, but no real instructions. And you, and you gave that in your introduction uh, to the program, which was so uh, beneficial, right? Oh, I'm so uh, pleased you enjoyed it. I've had a lot of good responses from it, you know. Uh, you know, the funny part is, okay, a little, little story for you, okay, because so you're, you're aware of the six step program, right? Okay. Yeah. That's the very beginning of, and, and whatnot. And so in 2012, when I got my hands on this file, okay, this whole program mentorship program, I was immediate past master of my lodge and I opened it up and there was a lot, it was very overwhelming. Right. And so <clears throat> without any clear direction, I, I, I knew that the six step program was where to start. That's where you bring them in, right? And and yeah. the, and the big push that year on the program 
was to guard the West Gate uh, by using the six-step program. And so I figured, okay, I'm going to get into this program and I'm going to just, I'm going to wholeheartedly absorb it and, and put it to work in our lodge the way it was designed and handed to us from Grand Lodge. And hopefully yeah. uh, that will help um, uh, build our lodge up again because we had lost uh, a bunch of guys to cancer and, and whatnot. Ten guys in five years. It was crazy. Um, and so I got so wrapped up in this six-step program. It was incredible. It was, Our retention rate went uh, – uh, it, it, it was incredible. We were, we were like uh, way down. Retention rate was, I don't know, 47% or something like that. One of the guys did the math. And then we, by the time a year of putting in the program – uh, two years in putting in the program and just following the, the six step programs, we got to a, a 97% retention rate. Right. Yeah. And, and that is good. Right. Yeah. And so it was yeah. like, yeah, okay. So we kept going <laughs> and we kept going hard with this really cool six step program that got handed to us. Right. Mm -hmm. And I never even went back into the folder to look at the rest of it. Right. And then, and then, one day somebody tells me about this Bill Overy guy, right? And, and uh, tells me that he's taken our, our, our mentorship program and he's tweaked it. And, and you know, it's kind of like um, uh, got some... Took it on from the six steps, effectively. Right, right? Yeah. yeah, right. And so it was like, okay, so now we, we got this program and, and I give it to our, our mentorship program guy. And uh, he's opening up and is like, Wow, this is so much cool stuff. We're, we're really glad that we have it. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, one thing uh, that we were we wanted to give feedback on was um, um, we got the program, we got the uh, the instruction, but we've learned a couple of things that we wanted to give feedback to the guys yeah. who were developing these things, so maybe they could put something in the introduction. Okay, yeah. not have one guy do it all um, one guy be in charge of the the six step program and, and and also be in charge of the mentoring program and the yeah. uh, and the coaching and all of that because um, we found that the candidates that, that came in through the program put that person at such a high level of a pedestal that they were afraid to say no to that guy and that it affected their desire to come to lodge or not come to lodge because uh, the guy would ask him often, the, the worshipful master would say, find a couple new guys to help in the kitchen, right? So you're not wanting to say no, they always found themselves in the kitchen, right? And, yeah. and so we, it's important to break up those programs so there's a different guy bringing them in and hands them off to a different guy afterwards that's going to coach them and bring them along and mentor them right well, and, the way yeah. i worked now now bill I, I i think that it's uh such a cool program what we really need to do is wrap up this episode i think and and open a whole new episode so we can explore it in detail uh are you good yeah. with that yeah i'll do anything you like yeah excellent okay so we're gonna we're gonna end this meeting here and then we're gonna relaunch the meeting so we all have to leave and come back in the way we got in the first place and then we'll re-record and and get on episode number two okay well uh, tonight right now yep yeah okay okay because so we're gonna do? Our, our free version is gonna run out hang on a sec go ahead matt <laughs> but before we do uh i just want to say on on behalf of steven and myself just thank you uh brother bill for for joining us on the on the program today on and discussing your your legacy project here if uh, we have less than a minute, but if real quick, if you could say what the, um, how would somebody get in touch with you if they wanted to learn more about this? Is there a, a handy way? Yeah. Okay. My, my email is um, Bill Overy 398 at gmail.com. And my phone number is. Oh, let's not do your phone number. I don't think we want to. I don't think we want to broadcast that too much, but we'll we'll take your uh, your email address, and uh, yeah. and we'll put it on the in the show notes and stuff. So yeah. thank you very much again, brother Bill, and we look forward to uh, hearing from you again in episode two.